In this video, we will be demonstrating my group's catapult, as well as the physics behind the demonstration. We'll be analyzing the launch, launch, the projectile, and the landing. This is our catapult, made up out of a metal spoon, uh, popsicle sticks, rubber bands, and googly eyes, Sorry. all glued together. We thought about using a plastic spoon at first, but decided to use a metal spoon since our since the force that we will be applying to the spoon could snap a regular plastic spoon. After just taking a few measurements to find our calculations, we found that by using a protractor, this angle where the spoon is at right now is 80 degrees. We measured out one meter from the catapult before we launched, and then measured out a little more to find out how far the projectile would go, and we found that to be 1.4 meters. This number was confirmed using a tracker. We timed the launch to be 40, 0.44 seconds and measured the initial launch height to be 0.16 meters. We weighed the rubber ball and that came out to be 8.05 grams or 0.00805 kilograms. The last calculation we used was for how far the spoon was pulled back, which was 4.25 centimeters. Hi, I'm Tim. I'm going to analyze the launch of our uh, catapult. We can analyze the launch using um, conservation of energy. And we can have the potential energy of the spring, which is 1 half kx squared, is equal to the final kinetic energy of the spring, 1 half mv squared. And we can ignore the potential energy due to the position because it's really, really small. Um, we, can, uh, we can measure the initial velocity by dividing our range over the time interval, and we can do some trig using our original angle to come up with the magnitude of the velocity. And we can plug that back into this equation here, and we can rearrange to solve for k, which is the spring constant, which comes out to about 46.5 newton meters, or, or joules. And that's how much energy is stored in the spring once it is fully pulled back and once we, that's how much energy is released at the launch. Hi everyone, I'm Charles, and what we're doing here is we're attempting to find out the maximum height of the projectile as it sails through the air. We do this by starting with the equation, velocity final equals velocity initial minus gravity times time. What we're wanting to know is when the velocity final of the projectile in the y coordinate equals zero. So we set that value equal to zero using the sine of 80 degrees which is the degree of our catapult launch multiplied by the appropriate quantities we solve for t and yield a value of 0.325 seconds we come to the equation y final equals y initial plus velocity of y initial times time minus one half g t squared from that, we find the y value, plug in all of these values, and we arrive at y final equaling 0.676 meters. This is kind of a model of what Tracker gave us, and I took these three um, accelerations, so 20.591, 6.357, and 5.515 and I averaged these accelerations to get 10.821 meters per second squared. And to get the force, I multiplied these, that average acceleration by the mass of the ball that we launched, which was 0 0.00805 kilograms, and that gave me a force of 0 0.08711 newtons. Hi, I'm Matthew. I'm the one that you all probably saw running out of the classroom last time. Since I don't have to worry about being afraid of everybody, I can do it this time. In conclusion over everything, we're going to, what we've done is we've used this catapult and we've explained the physics behind everything about how far the ball traveled and all of the information. We have a total range of 1.4 meters. It was in the air for 0.44 seconds, and as you can see, our catapult was quite steep with the 80 degrees. Pulled it back about four and a quarter centimeters. The ball was 0.00805 kilograms, approximately. 
and the initial height from the release was at 0.16 meters. And if you're noticing this, this is one of the unintended consequences of having to run out of the classroom. All right, our K value ended up being 46.5 Newton meters. Our Y final, which we, as you saw Charles compute, was 0.676 meters. And as I hobble along over here, again, love unintended consequences. Our F value ended up being 0 0.08711 Newtons. So again, thank you everybody for watching our presentation and putting up with me.